Thank you very much. Um, before the witness is called in, um, we want to take the small legal matter that Mr. Ken had raised um, about the operation of um, Rule 66.3. Indeed, Rule 66.3 does say before, quote, before testifying, the witness shall be informed of the offence defined in Article 70, Paragraph 1A, unquote. Um, of course, the question rises. We can, um, the Chamber indicated in the morning that the preference is not to proceed in any way that it may intimidate a witness. And in saying that, the Chamber is mindful of the provision of Article 60, 8.1, which is a statutory provision, Article 68.1, that says Chamber shall take measures to protect the, amongst other things, psychological well-being of witnesses and victims. We do not, of course, at this stage, want to get into the question whether or not there might be a conflict between the rules and the statute for which Article 50 one five, I believe, regulates. It is not necessary to do that, uh, to go there yet. Uh, but what we do know is that the witness preparation decision does say in paragraph 52 of that decision, and I quote, the familiarization protocol is to be followed in this case, except to the extent that it regulates contact between the calling party and its witnesses, in which case it is superseded by witness preparation protocol, unquote. In saying that, it is good to note that, or helpful rather to note, that paragraph 100 of the witness familiarization protocol, paragraph 100, says, amongst other things, quote, before the testimony in accordance with rule 66.3, of the rules of procedure and evidence, the VWU shall inform the witness of the offence defined in Article 70, Paragraph 1A of the statute, unquote. So that takes us back to the Chamber's earlier indication that we prefer that um, the advice to be given to the witness pertaining to Rule 66.3, be done outside the courtroom before they come in. We will expect that the VWU would have done this, and we also, from now on, as a standard procedure, would want the party calling the witness, be it the prosecution or the defense, when it gets to the case for the defense, to put that matter on the record before the witness begins to testify as to whether Rule 66.3 had been complied with. Uh, in this case, I will not require the prosecution to put that on the record at the moment, unless the prosecution wants to do that. But what we can... I, I can confirm, Your Honours, that uh, this was traversed with the witness during preparation, both her obligation to tell the truth and the fact that lying uh, while giving her evidence was an offence on the statute, without going into more details, but that much was put. So that was given to the witness uh, during preparation? That is correct. That then uh, solves the matter. Uh, we will then, uh, just for record, as a manner of our procedure, to follow that as a standard practice to before the witness gets into the courtroom for, or starts testifying, as the case may be, it's better before they get into the courtroom.
uh, for the information to be put on the record. Uh, Your Honour, we're grateful for that clarification. Uh, and, of course, we will be guided accordingly. Um, can we take it, therefore, because it is important, uh, in the same way that the witness has uh, rights for their uh, dignity to be protected, uh, the uh, accused has a right to be protected against false evidence. And, Your Honour, that um, statement of the prosecution warning its witnesses that they may be liable, as Judge Cott said, to imprisonment and conviction, um, uh, conviction and imprisonment for false testimony, should be on video because it may become relevant later on depending upon how the evidence pans out that they have been given proper notice as to their liability under the Rome Statute for perjury. And, Your Honour, that needs to be videoed. Um, Your Honour, the second aspect is perhaps uh, uh, the court could consider in, in due course uh, requiring the VWU uh, just to give uh, a statement, a short note, stating that that has been complied with. But, Your Honour, um, if the prosecution have it recorded and preserved on video, uh, I think those concerns uh, would be adequately met for the future, uh, given the rights of the, uh, uh, the witnesses. Um, I think that's a fair way to proceed in terms of uh, because the witness preparation decision does contemplate video recording of preparation, does it not? Yeah, okay. Uh, but at any rate, um, prosecution needs to give the Rule 66.3 warning and then um, it will be sufficient simply to th thereafter indicate that on the record uh, of the case before the witness begins the testimony. I think indeed. that should be sufficient. Indeed. And, and Your Honor, uh, just so we, you know, things go smoothly from uh, going forward, what I would um, commend to the bench's consideration is the prosecution prepare a short pro forma document that should be signed by the witness on every occasion and that would also provide independent documentary evidence that the witness has been informed clearly and unequivocally that not only should they tell the truth but that it is a criminal offence uh, to perjure oneself that may result in imprisonment. I think if that can be signed by the witness in each case it can be kept by the prosecution but it does need to be preserved uh, in these proceedings given the concerns that we have repeatedly raised uh, about the dangers that we face. Your Honor, I wonder if the bench could consider that in due course. It's a can we can rule on that. that we, we need not um, overstretch the matter or that exercise. Uh, the rules say, before, quote, before testifying, the witness shall be informed of the offence defined in Article 70, Paragraph 1A. Unquote. I think it's enough to just inform the witness. I don't think having them to sign things, um, that's, uh, that might be taking a little too much, too far. Uh, Your Honor, the only reason I raise it is that uh, it deals with criminal proceedings and the form of the notice and the clarity of the notice may become very relevant depending upon what is said and the evidence that the defence brings to controvert the witness. Uh, Your Honour, it is one thing to be mistaken, to have a hazy recollection. It's quite another to deliberately uh, come and tell lies to the court. And Your Honour, it's in that second eventuality, if the uh, occasion arises, that criminal, criminal liability may attach to Article 70. Now, Your Honour, uh, given that criminal prospect, uh, my only suggestion was that it's always better to err on the side of caution so that in those subsequent Article 70 proceedings um, there could be no doubt that the witness has been given a full um, uh, briefing as to the consequence of lying. Your Honour, that's rendered even more important in this case given that a review of all the OTP statements discloses that witnesses have not been told. Uh, Mr. Khan, you're making submissions beyond the purpose uh, now. Let's leave it at, at this. By the time the witness, the VWU, would have finished giving witnesses their um, Rule 66.3 warning and the prosecution doing that, I think it would be abundantly clear to the witnesses what the point is. We will leave it at that so we can proceed. I am much obliged. Thank you. Great. Um, prosecutor, I will, just to be clear, 
I will take a moment to deal with Rule 66.3 exceptionally, exceptionally, with this witness and we, before you continue. As the court pleases, yes. what, what I would like to clarify is, of course, that uh, everything which takes place during the witness prep preparation protocol is videotaped and recorded, and, and those recordings are preserved. Um, court officer, we may now invite the witness in, but following the usual protocol of lowering the blinds. Thank you.